Okay, great. So the recording has started. Maybe one of us can pray, then we can move forward. Kanan, uh, are you okay to pray? Could you hear me, Kanan? Okay, uh, maybe anyone else who can. Oh, okay, he's he's having some. He's unwell. Sure, no worries, uh, Kanan. Take care. We'll uh, keep you in prayer. Mm, uh, uh, one of the others. Okay, I'll go ahead. Yes, please. Father, we thank you for this wonderful morning, Lord God. We thank you for this new week. And as we go ahead with the lessons, Lord God, I pray that your spirit be with each one of us and guide us, Lord Jesus. Help one of us, to, each one of us to understand your word and the knowledge that we are to gain from, from these teachings, Lord Jesus. Let this teaching not just be teaching, but let it guide our life and our our uh, wills to you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for Ma'am and for all the students as we as we come to class, Lord Jesus. Uh, we want you to open up our heart and Lord Jesus. We want every word to be understood, Lord Jesus. Let there be no disturbance and let there be no power cuts as well, Lord Jesus. Let there be smooth connection, Lord God. And I pray for your favor to be with each one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Um, Okay, yep, so, uh, yeah, kind of, uh, internet is uh, fluctuating. Anyway, uh, so I was just saying, how are you all doing? Are you through with all your classes, third year classes? Or uh, some subjects are still, uh, you know, you, you have portions to complete. Yeah, we, we still have some more to complete, man. Okay, okay, okay. And assessments are going on right now? Some assessments? Uh, we had, yeah, we, we have one IPR. Okay. IRP. One IRP okay. and the other for the youth ministry one. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Okay, sure, sure. No, just wanted to see when to kind of uh, place your last assignment. So we'll do that. Mm. Yeah, with regard to this uh, subject, I think we might, uh, uh, you know, uh, go all the way till the last week of April. Let's see, you know, how it goes if I can wrap it up uh, faster than that. Just trying to go, you know, as much uh, verse by verse as possible without skipping, you know, large sections of uh, the portions here. But uh, we are okay. We are comfortable because the main mm, uh, subject where we needed a lot of explanation was uh, Hebrews. 
as far as uh, first peter second peter is concerned uh, yes we do need uh, clarity on what peter is writing but then you know because he is not really referring to jewish traditions uh, and things like that uh, it's fairly easier for us to understand what uh, peter is writing so the practical things so similarly even the book of james it's got a lot of practical insights so then we are able to relate easier to it and we can go slightly um, uh, you know faster on these subjects so that way uh, you know we should be able to catch up uh, but your last assignment will be 40 marks i know your second assignment also i i am yet to post sorry about that because uh, you know it's kind of taking a while um, to set it up so uh, the second assignment also i'm thinking of giving you something very simple it's already ready i i just have to release it so uh it it'll be more like a multiple choice uh, sort of a true or false sort of a uh, format then it's quick uh, for you also to answer uh, but the last assignment um let me see if for e-learning students as well i can give uh, uh you know a more um, uh, something like you you've got to write your inputs um uh, as compared to just you know a quick uh, uh, write or uh, for true or false or multiple choice sort of uh, an answer so for both for both google classroom as well as for um, e learning i will give uh, something that has to do with understanding and writing you know what you have learned so far so that will be the the longest written uh, assignment that you will be doing but otherwise you know the first two are uh, simpler to answer okay so that that is a little bit about the assignments and you should be able to uh, you know hand it in also well in time and i told us when we started the class that uh, please make sure to attempt all assessments okay uh, because if we don't do that then unfortunately we end out end up uh, missing out on some of the marks and you know for for you to qualify to complete the course you need attendance you need marks okay so uh, please make sure that you're doing your best to to um, you've put in so much effort you might as well finish it and finish it well okay so a little bit about the assessments so let's just go back to our portions here we were in first peter chapter 4 And we've been seeing how you know peter is uh, encouraging the believers to have a holy lifestyle where they they are living a life which is dedicated to god so this is not just in the worship which they bring to god uh, but in also the daily living because uh, our understanding is that even our daily living uh, is something where we can show our trust in God. So that is why we, we talked about submission in the earlier uh, chapters here, chapter 2, chapter 3, um, Peter talked about submitting to the governmental authorities. He also spoke about submitting to um, uh, people you know who we work for uh, and then in chapter 3 we saw quite elaborately you know he talked about um uh, women husbands husbands wives so his way of looking at that relationship is he he told that you know wives you submit yourselves to your husbands but then he also uh, um, uh, reiterates the responsibility of the husbands so if you go back to the culture in which this uh, this letter was written you would notice that those days women had hardly any rights in uh, the marriage relationship so it's actually quite radical of Peter to um, uh, begin to address husbands and also tell them that, you know, husbands, you need to honor your wives, live with them with understanding. And uh, then he also goes on to say that if uh, you don't maintain that right relationship with your wife, then your prayers also will be hindered. So your spiritual walk can be hindered if you are not um, in right relationship with your wife and we've seen how he talked about uh you know the good behavior the virtuous behavior of a wife which can 
draw a husband uh, to god even if even if that uh, person may be an unbeliever so all that we we saw and then uh, you know we moved on uh, to chapter 4 now where we are learning about uh, the fact that okay why should we why should we undergo um, you know sometimes justly we uh, go through these these um, um, sufferings if you want to call it like in this case we said uh, even if there is a harsh um, employer or master as as peter puts it even then you know he uh, says that it's a commendable thing or it is a it is something to appreciate if a person is still maintaining the right attitude and serving such a master because we can understand that the dependence of this person is on god so uh, if you recall he used the, he used the phrase for god's sake so for god's sake you do the right thing what is you uh, what is the point if we do the wrong thing and we come under punishment for that so he's encouraging uh, and speaking about all these things and then he takes us to consider the life of jesus and he talks about how the lord jesus he went through so much of humiliation um, uh, in his experience on the earth he went through you know accusation from people to the extent of physical hurt but then you know you don't really see him um uh, there is this term called reviling or like slander right you speak against uh, so and so you speak against the authorities you speak against your master you speak against people jesus never did that but he went through the suffering in a humble way and uh, that's what peter is saying look if you go through it like that then you are really following the example of jesus so do the right thing because it's the right thing do the right thing because um, you know you're you're trusting in god do the right thing because uh, uh, Jesus has given us a wonderful example and now in uh, chapter 4 you know he shared with us that Christ suffered for us in the flesh and those of us who have suffered in the flesh you know in this way he also says that you have ceased from sin or he is just uh, letting us know that uh, we've seen you know passages like this in other uh, epistles as well where we are told that when we undergo any kind of trial okay and uh, please remember whenever we say suffering trial the godly kind of suffering trial is when we have not done anything wrong because sometimes we can be on the wrong and therefore get the uh, the uh, you know punishment or the consequence to our wrongdoing now that should not be understood as suffering godly suffering or persecution that would be you know plain simple consequences to the wrong that we have done but if we go through and in this case you know he is also saying that uh, suffering in the flesh he says suffering in the flesh or uh, you could say that uh, through this is more placed in the context of persecution okay, somebody has gone through so much of pain and uh, hurt and even physical um, you know distress it has a property where it can help us uh, overcome this world because you see um, for us in general we are we have a tendency to be drawn by the world because the world offers us um, fame the world offers us all kinds of pleasures the world offers us uh, you know its own kind of honor all these things but then when you have suffered for christ you know you begin to realize that uh, it's a great privilege for me to um, be commended or appreciated in God's sight as compared to having the things of the world. So you, we, could, we can come to a place where we realize, hey, uh, at the end of the day, eternity, eternal things are what really matter. So even if I have some losses, here on the earth or we go through some um you know later on he will use the term fiery trial 
because these believers would have gone through so many challenges for believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. So he's just trying to encourage them. And he says there are so many advantages. God will appreciate you. You know, you will get the reward from God. You will see good results for doing the right thing. And here he also adds that we can overcome sin. We are seized from sin or the attractions of sin also become very um, he says seized no they, we are just we are just able to overcome these things when we go through uh, uh, suffering especially physical suffering for the sake of the gospel so you could um, put this under the category of persecution so when we go through persecution okay so somebody who has been through persecution, it says that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lusts of men, but for the will of God. So there will be a strong sense of wanting to live for the sake of the gospel. Okay, So then we said that he was telling the people that they need to live a life which is different from the worldly people so I, I i read for us from you know the message version right like a life of um, lusts a life of uh, you know drinking parties all kinds of things that people who don't know god have uh, a believer should not have a similar testimony so think about it you know what is the difference if the way a believer lives is just the way a person in the world lives okay by this we mean uh, indulging in sinful activities, indulging in, um, you know, sinful things. So if there is no uh, self-control, if we don't exercise the power that we have received through the cross over sin, then, you know, the life of a believer and an unbeliever would remain the same. But you know, Peter is calling the believers and he's saying that your past life was like that. And he also tells them, you spent enough time living like that, however you like. Okay, But now, please don't live like that. But instead, you must live such, or we as believers must live such a holy life that um, even if you know people want to find fault with us, they should not be able to find any. Okay, uh, And then he also reminds us that all people... Yeah, uh, even those who speak evil about us uh, for when we are you know doing the right thing he says everybody has to give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead okay so um this gives us great confidence to keep walking in the ways of god and to not give up uh, and, you know, he also goes on to say this reason the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. So, you know, we earlier we saw uh, this thing about um, uh, Jesus going to Hades and preaching to the prisoners. But also you see that uh, uh, before Jesus ascended up you know he made his uh, sacrifice and ascended up into heaven there is a, a zone if you will you know in hades which is called as paradise so paradise was like the uh, place where the righteous people were were uh, positioned but you know the moment the lord jesus uh, paid the price for the sins of mankind uh, the proclamation of what the Lord Jesus has done, you know, that is what is uh, spoken of as preached. Preached, if you look up the Greek word here, it uh, does may not mean, you know, calling people to salvation. Because the dead people, you can't call them back to salvation. Hebrews 9, okay, go back to what we studied. Hebrews 9 verse 27, it says that, for it is appointed for man to die once and after which is judgment so when people are alive that is the time to make a decision whether you accept christ or you don't now once person is dead preaching to a dead person as it mentions here for this reason gospel was preached also to those who are dead so this doesn't mean that they were being called to salvation it simply means that these people heard the declaration of what jesus had 
done or the proclamation of what Jesus had done. So that is how we will understand this. And, you know, we, we realize uh, that, you know, God is a judge of the living and the dead as well. Okay. Now, moving forward. Okay. Everybody with me? Okay, class, I would need some reaction from you. Otherwise, it, it becomes very hard for me to know whether you're getting what I'm saying or not. Because sometimes when I ask questions, the answers are very delayed. And so I kind of avoid asking questions. Uh, but I'm hoping that, you know, you're tuned in actively and uh, listening to what I'm saying. So even, you know, a comment on the chat, a yes, no, is really helpful. I, I hope it's okay. Are you all uh, with me? Yes, now we are listening. Okay, okay, great, great, great. Okay, let's continue. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. Okay, now let's move on. Uh, so again, you see, when someone's going through persecution, uh, we we might have this question of God, this is so long and when is this going to end? Uh, you know, when are you going to uh, judge righteously? How long do I have to bear this unjust, uh, unjust, you know, persecution, all of those questions arise in our mind. So here is Peter in the next verse, verse seven, he says, but the end of all things is at hand. So basically he's saying, see, that is a good thing in our uh, life on the earth because uh, this is the place where we will undergo, you know, the greatest, uh, you know, sufferings, challenges, whatever it is that, that uh, one can face. But once this life on earth is done, you know, we will move on to eternal life and we will move on to glory, which is a completely different kind of a life filled with, you know, uh, no interference from the kingdom of darkness, filled with God's glory, filled with, you know, the things of the kingdom like joy, hope, peace, all of those things. So when we uh, look at the struggles of this world, okay, we must recognize that these things will soon pass away. Or here also, you know, Peter begins the next part of what he's going to say as, but the end of all things is at hand. Okay, so don't worry. Uh, these challenges will end. Even the persecution which you are going through, you know, it will also come to an end. And therefore, therefore, he says, don't give up on your faith. It's only the person who understands that, okay, there is this life, but there is also a greater eternal life that we are able to live so differently from the world that the world might wonder, hey, how come these people are still so bold and confident and you know all that? Why are they continuing to do what they um, believe in? Because we believe that soon this temporal world will pass. And we will step into glory. So that gives so much, so much of courage, isn't it, now for us to uh, continue to be overcomers. So with this in mind, once again, he instructs them and he tells them, you know, therefore, be serious. What is serious? Serious is to be, um, uh, it's to be like um, fair-minded, to have the right kind of a thought process. Okay. So people who are serious are the people who are thinking in a focused way. They don't just think random things and, you know, just waste, waste their attention. So be serious means be, be, um, have a, a fair mind, have a sound mind and then watchful. Watchful is alertness. Okay. So where you are looking out, you're waiting waiting with alertness so that is watchful how can we be uh, watchful no, watchfulness he adds here he says watchful in your prayer so we continue to pray you know we continue to ask god for all that he has promised during our lifetime during you know our uh, 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 times of trials uh, and in this case in the time of persecution and also knowing that hey you know the end of the world is is coming uh, we can't, uh, can't and, and even those who are moving on, you know, the people who are accusing the, the righteous uh, believers, um, knowing that they will also be judged when the end 
comes, what is the next thing that we can expect? No judgment for both the believer and the unbeliever. So be watchful in prayer. So what can we pray? No, we can pray so many things that God give me strength to go through this well and uh, God uh, forgive. No, that's how Jesus prayed, isn't it? So far, uh, Peter has spoken about the sufferings of Jesus and we should understand that Peter was alive when Jesus went through what he went through, unlike you know uh, somebody like a Timothy or somebody like a Paul. Uh, yeah, Paul received by revelation, but Peter firsthand he saw the sufferings of Jesus, and that's how he's telling the believers, "Come on, you know, if he could go through it for the right reasons, you can go through it." And you know, the end is close, uh, 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 so don't don't give up. But you know, be be alert, be mm, serious, and uh, uh, pray, pray, okay? pray for yourself, pray for others. And now he goes on to add a lot of practical aspects of community living. So you know, he says uh, above all these, uh, have fervent love for one another. So one another referring to the body of Christ, okay? or the term which the believers used those days was brethren, brotherhood. So fellowship of believers. So fervent love is an earnest kind of a love which we have for each other, which is sincere. Okay? In other words, it is sincere. It is seeking to do good to the other believer. That is the kind of love that we must carry. So uh, he, he continues to say that love will cover a multitude of sins. Uh, and uh, he also emphasizes hospitality. Remember, we saw this even in the book of Hebrews. So usually they would address things ha that had to do with the fellowship of believers as well. So here he says, just like the Hebrews writer, he says, be hospitable. Okay, take care of people. But he also adds and he says, without grumbling. Because don't you think it, it can happen that you know, when we are uh, uh, taking care of people, when we serve, sometimes we develop this attitude where we say, oh, I have done so much, nobody is noticing, or I have done so much, uh, I have put so much effort, given my time, and uh, God, where is your reward? So what is all this? This is all grumbling. Okay, Grumbling is um, having an attitude where, you know, we feel that... Uh, I have not been treated fairly or I have not received the kind of appreciation or the reward which is due to me. So that's when grumbling comes into the picture. So grumbling is very similar to the attitude of the Israelites you know, when they were walking through the wilderness where God did so much, but they were focusing on what is not there. They were focusing on what God should have done. So that kind of a behavior. So he says, come on, you know, when you are hospitable, please don't grumble. Do willingly, do happily. Then that is, you know, the kind of hospitality that God is looking for. So all these matters, you know, these are all to do um, with our, you know, inner attitudes. Uh, so it's it's really challenging and you know only uh, i i believe that when we are moving towards maturity that's when you know we can overcome all these uh, um, uh, attitudinal issues where yeah love can be there but love may not be sincere but here peter is telling you no know, fervently love meaning have sincere love with maturity that will come and also grumbling hospitality without grumbling that also is a sign of maturity. Uh, why, why do you think that you know maturity um, will help us have sincere love and not grumble when we are hospitable? Anybody, any thoughts to that? Why does maturity help? We can uh, empathize ourselves. We can see others. Okay, okay, good. We can put yeah. uh, shoes. Okay, very nice. So, uh, that's right, uh, Thomas. I just want to reiterate what uh, you know. Thomas is saying. He, he used the word like uh, empathize. We can put ourselves in their shoes. So, maturity, whenever we think about maturity, uh, consider parenthood. Because parents 
are like generally they're very selfless you know they we've heard stories right like they don't get sleep but they make sure the children sleep well they may work very hard but they make sure the children get you know their uh, education or their free time or their vacations uh, so they sacrifice on you know uh, if they have money to spend on themselves they don't because they want the children to get new clothes and you know new toys so parenthood if i may put it this way is very selfless because parents think more of the children than themselves so then we usually say oh parents you know mature <coughs> compared to children parents are mature so maturity really has to do with selflessness even in the body of christ when believers become selfless where it's not always about me 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 so that is when we can do what uh, is be, is written in god's word sincere love hospitality without grumbling or murmuring so you know think about it like that so we uh, we want a maturing congregation so i know uh, at least two of you here you want to be pastors you are already serving uh, in in that area so what are we doing we are working towards building a mature people it's only the mature people you know who will be able to do what is being asked of them here so that is the way we would look at it that is the way we would raise a congregation okay come on we have to mature the people they need to see what is important for the kingdom you know uh, and uh, for you know others so uh, th- just bear that in mind we continue okay again he talks about a fellowship he talks about the body of christ and he says as each one has received a gift minister it to one another see minister is serve so if i have something i can share that or i can use it to bless why do you serve you serve again to build up the kingdom of god the body of christ so he is encouraging you know all the believers that come on the, you know the kingdom has to be very dynamic where all the believers are serving now if you go back to church history and uh, at the time when you know constantine institutionalized the church it got uh, uh, sort of uh, se- segregated into the clergy and the laity so the clergy used to do all the spiritual work whereas the laity will just come here receive go back but when we look at what the bible says it says that no all believers as each one has received a gift all believers again you can go back refer to first corinthians 12 and see how in the body everybody has a part to play so all of us need to do our part if you have a gift or in other words it's not if whatever gift you have understand okay this is what god has given me and serve the body with that gift so minister it to one another good stewards of the manifold grace of god so where did i get the gift from obviously it's not mine i have received it from by the grace of god so i honor if somebody gives it gives us something which we don't deserve okay how do we treat it you know we are so grateful so in the same way whatever gift god has given us we are grateful for that and we use it to build up the body of christ Uh, and so he kind of elaborates on it and he says if anyone speaks let him speak as the oracles of god so speaking as the oracles of god is like speaking the way god speaks okay so that's how we should be bringing the focus on the on what is on god's heart that is how you know he's saying so if you can speak speak as if you're speaking the very mind of god to the people and then you know he goes on to say let him anything else that any other ability that you have which is given by god you know use it according to what god supplies now some of us we will uh, compare you know ourselves with other people let's say in the area of speaking only maybe uh, somebody has the grace of god to uh, speak teach god's word but we may have just started out 
right trying to understand the bible thoroughly interpret it correctly share it in such a way that people can apply it in their lives but when we are doing what we are doing we could look at somebody who's you know going i don't know doing uh, crusades and you know somebody who's teaching and preaching on the television we could compare ourselves and say oh look at me i'm just uh, nothing compared to so and so preacher or so and so teacher but you know we should not do that because here we are very clearly told you know let him do it as with the ability which god supplies so god has wired each one of us differently he has positioned us differently and there is something he wants to accomplish okay uh in and through us in the given situation so never compare oneself with another person uh you know and say oh i want to be in their position no you can compare to improve that is a good thing you know compare um, to see hey how can i minister Uh, in an anointed way like that person i will learn that's a better attitude rather than to say you know that uh, i i covet another person's calling or another person's gifting no what is the ability that god has given me with whatever god has supplied to me my duty is that i have to be a good steward i have to be faithful see that's all god asks he says what do you have in your hands generally you've seen that right even earlier like moses god asked what do you have god i have a rod in my hand okay you use that okay. uh you have what uh, uh two loaves five five fishes is that the thing or five fishes two loaves i'm getting confused but whatever it is that you know a person has god can multiply that so with the ability which is given to each of us use that uh, that in all things he says god be glorified through jesus christ to whom belong the glory dominion forever and ever amen so to put it in a short way be a good steward god has given it to us the gift we use it responsibly the gift is not our own okay now moving forward again words of encouragement from peter where he says that uh, you know uh, don't uh, think that it is so strange that you're going through persecution and he in fact uses the term here fiery trial so if you look that up in the greek you know you would see it says burning burning so sometimes the the kind of difficulty or the persecution that we go through it may feel like you are in the fire and you are burning but he says uh for a believer you know somewhere in our minds we should have it clear that if i am going to follow god if i am going to do the right thing if i am going to live to fulfill my purpose for the kingdom there are going to be challenges so it's not like i'm surprised oh i'm doing the right thing why is it that i'm going through struggles no if you're going to live like you know jesus if you're going to live like um daniel shadrach meshach uh, and apetnego there will be difficulties there were times when they were pulled up okay by the authorities by uh, people around them uh, but it's part of our commitment to god that hey if you have chosen this life then don't be surprised if certain difficulties come our way so we should have that in our mind but you see the good thing is that we are going through the trial for a good reason no it's uh, as he said earlier it's not like you ro- we robbed a bank or we we um, cheated someone or did something uh, unrighteous no we are not suffering for those kind of reasons but we are suffering for honorable reasons so when that happens remember that yeah you know everyone has their due share of such challenges they will come it's nothing strange okay uh, but he says carry a good attitude in the midst of such a suffering so that is rejoice rejoice okay because you see 
uh, it's it's also says here okay remember this this particular passage i'm uh, verse 12 when verse 13 he says rejoice to the extent that you partake of christ's sufferings so you know people ask this question if christ has already suffered once and we've seen that in the book of hebrews right hebrews 9 10 in those passages we see that jesus became the atonement price so he suffered there is no need for another human being to pay the price the way jesus paid the price so then what is this partake of christ suffering what is partake okay i'll just i uh, quickly look at the exact greek word here mm. yeah partake share okay uh, so means to share in christ sufferings though we don't need to suffer for our salvation okay get it very clear very clear because sometimes people take this theology and they you know uh, uh, preach it to believers and they say oh the sufferings of christ so we also have to suffer to receive our salvation not at all yes this passage talks about partake becoming a partaker or sharing with christ sufferings but what does it mean look at the context context is we are talking about persecution so when we go through persecution it is considered by god as an extension of the sufferings of christ or pa- we are participating in that and god what does he do you know god um will his glory will be revealed when we are going through this okay uh, and that is the reason he says rejoice and he also ends that verse 13 and it says also be glad with exceeding joy uh, because if you don't understand that you know that uh, uh, persecution it's like me saying oh come on you know jesus you all you're my brother you went through this i am going through this for your sake we go through it with a very positive attitude and with happiness so rejoice exceeding joy uh, you know he uses words like that because if you don't recognize that it's very funny that the bible is saying oh you suffer but you be happy in that suffering you get it but why should we suffer and be happy about it because we are going through it be, uh, for righteous reasons we are um, you know we are uh, uh, recognizing with the sufferings of jesus and god's glory is going to be revealed see stephen he was persecuted he died what happened you know it made such a such an impact that uh, paul at the age of 25 is said to have watched the execution of stephen and it impacted his life that wow what courage this man has that he was stoned and yet he is so bold about his faith and about the god that he worships so it made an impact on saul who later became paul so when we go through persecution god's glory will be revealed and we are participating or we are sharing in the sufferings of christ okay for his name sake okay so let's just take a break class we'll come back in 10 minutes so uh, let's meet at 10:01 slightly past time so see you then thank you